Hello and welcome to another X-Ray Tech tutorial. I am Tom Nasser, the Automation Alchemist, and today I'm gonna to show you how to loop through arrays and lists in Make, formerly known as Integromat. Let's get started. Creating a loop in Make will let you go through an array or list and perform an action for every item it contains. With loops, you could send an email to every address in a list or assign a task in Notion to every person in an array. First, we need to have an array for Make to work with. Here, we have an Airtable base with a linked record field. Items linked in a linked record field are stored as arrays, so this will be perfect for our demonstration. We'll just add an Airtable module in Make and enter the ID of the record we want to use. Just as a quick tip, if you ever wanted to get the ID of an Airtable record, just add a formula field to the table. Enter record ID as the formula, and Airtable will show the ID of that record. We'll copy that ID into Make so we can find our record. Then we'll run the module, and we can see that Make retrieved the record we wanted. Now that we have a record with an array, we're going to add an iterator module. We'll click on the green flow control icon and select iterator from the menu that pops up. In the array field, we have to enter an array from our previous module. We'll choose this name field, which contains the names of some fruits. We know that this data is formatted as an array because the name that we see in make ends with brackets like this. This field will only accept an array, but if you'd like to use a list instead, you just need to use a simple formula to convert it. Use the split formula Put your list before the comma and enter the delimiter that your list uses after the comma. In most cases, this will be something like a comma or a semicolon. For now, let's go back to using our name array. On its own, the iterator won't perform any actions. Instead, it will make it so any module added after the iterator will run once for every item in the array. So if you add a Slack message module after the iterator, it will send that message once for every item in the array. If there are four items in the array, a single Slack module will send four Slack messages. In our Slack message, we'll insert the bundle order position variable, which will show the number one for the first item in the array, two for the second, etc. We'll also add this piece of data called value, which is the actual item in the array. In this case, it will be the name of a fruit. We'll click on run once, and we should see a whole bunch of Slack messages pop up. As you can see, we've got a message for each fruit in the array numbered in the order they were in. But what if you wanted to perform a single action after you loop through an array? For instance, maybe you wanna send one Slack message that says all set at the end. If we were to add another module to the scenario, it would run the module for each message in the array. In other words, we'd get four all set messages instead of just one. Both of these Slack modules would run for each item in the array. To signal the end of a loop, all we have to do is add a filter. Set the filter so the scenario will only continue if the bundle order position is equal to the last item in the bundle. Since we know our fruit array has four items, we could set it to four. But you won't always know offhand how many items there are in a given array. So instead, let's use the length function to dynamically set this value to the number of items in the array. Now, once the iterator runs through the last item, the scenario will continue and perform every subsequent step only once. We'll click on run once again, and we should see five Slack messages, one for each item in the array and a fifth that says all set. So our iterator is good to go. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to support the channel. If you'd like to learn more about no-code and low-code automation, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can check all those links in the description down below, and as always, don't forget, keep the flow.